patterns in music, dance, and mathematics. Most of us have heard somewhere along the way that everything in math is a pattern. If this is true, then why don't the Common Core State Standards for Mathematics include patterns? Where are the patterns? We'll take a look at the Common Core Math Practices. Math Practice 7 says, look for and make use of structure. Math Practice 8 is a real mouthful. It says, look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. Well, the first time I read that, it didn't make a lot of sense to me. It sounded like a lot of interesting words, but I had to ask myself, well, what does this really mean? I discovered that looking for structure means looking for patterns. And we could rethink Math Practice 7 a little more simply and ask ourselves, well, can I find a pattern that describes how this math system works? And I could rethink that difficult Math Practice 8 more simply and ask myself, well, if this pattern works over here, could it also work over there? When we count by ones, what's the pattern? Well, each number counted is... 4 is counted after 3 because 4 is... And 14 is counted after 13 because 14 is... So this is a plus 1 growing pattern. And when children look for patterns, they go beyond memorizing. They look for the structures that describe how the counting system works. When we count by tens, what's the pattern? Well, now each number counted is 40 is counted after 30 because 40 is and 140 is counted after 130 because 140 is. So now we have a plus 10 growing pattern. And when we encourage children to think about how counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 connects to counting 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, they learn to find the big ideas in math. And they discover that math really does make sense. So, if a child understands patterns in kindergarten, how can we build on this understanding? Can I build on my understanding of growing patterns when I learn about skip counting? Hmm. Now each number counted is 4 is counted after 2 because 4 is and 14 is counted after 12 because 14 is. So what's the pattern now? When children look for patterns, they don't see every topic in math as something new. They make connections and see the structures that underlie how math systems work. In second and third grades, can I use skip counting patterns to figure out how many objects are in an array? So now I'm looking at these pictures, trying to figure out how they work. How would you describe the structures you see in these pictures? When we teach our first graders about the commutative property of addition, we're asking them to recognize a pattern. 
And when we teach our second graders about odd and even numbers, we want them to see a pattern. And we expect those older students to master the patterns of the place value system. Our third and fourth graders look for patterns in multiplication and division. So how would you describe the pattern you see here? And how would you extend or continue this pattern if you wanted to drop down and build the next row? And if this pattern shows dividing into groups of three, can I make a pattern to show dividing into groups of four? Now I'm doing that thing called look for and express regularity in repeated reasoning. So that's where the patterns are in the Common Core, in the math practices. And these are not new. They are the same math practices that are called process standards. And they're called mathematical proficiencies as well. Patterns are everywhere in mathematics. And it's this search for patterns that helps children develop mathematical habits of mind and lays the foundation for algebraic thinking. You might want to pause the movie and take a look at these pictures and try and figure out the patterns that describe what's happening here. But there's so much more. Our goal is for students to generalize their thinking, to apply these mathematical habits of mind to situations both inside and outside of mathematics. So where can we look for these situations outside of mathematics? Moving through math extends the search for pattern into the arts. How would you describe the patterns you see in a piano keyboard? You might want to pause the movie and play with these finger patterns in your right hand. If you don't read music, it might be difficult for, for you to figure out the patterns or the structures in this song. But if you can find the patterns, it will help you figure out how the song is organized. A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D. Hmm, that's something we all recognize. Well, it looks like A is a group of four notes. And then when we repeat A, that group of four notes gets repeated. B is a group of three notes. Those three notes get repeated. C is a larger group. There are six notes in a C group. And then that group gets repeated. And there are three notes in a D group. And then the D group gets repeated. When you see patterns, things that looked complicated before, suddenly look a lot simpler. Musicians don't memorize music note by note. They look for patterns to figure out how the music is organized. Conductors use movement patterns to show musical beats in groups of two. Your hand moves downward on beat one. Your hand moves upward on beat two and we repeat this AB pattern over and over. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. When we march, we match our feet to the AB patterns in the music. We step with our left foot on beat one. We step with our right foot on beat two. 
and we repeat this AB movement pattern over and over. Left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. When we connect our understanding of math to our understanding of music and dance, we generalize our mathematical thinking, leading to deeper and richer meaning. So why do we integrate music and movement with the study of math? Well, this is not a new idea. It's about 3,000 years old from the time of the ancient Greeks. In moving through math, students see, hear, and feel how patterns form the building blocks of music, dance, and mathematics. And moving through math is an example of arts integrated teaching where students make connections between art forms and other academic subjects. Arts integration makes learning joyful, creative, and it brings intellectual rigor to the study of mathematics.